Catcalling outlawed as Spain fortifies women's rights. The equality minister welcomes the changes, but far-right party Vox accuses the government of promoting hatred of beauty and of men. The bill also reforms Spain's controversial rape law so that any non-consensual penetration will now count as rape, regardless of violence or intimidation was used. So... I, isn't that what rape is? Is that not what rape is in America? Non-consensual penetration? I didn't know that it had to be threats of violence or intimidation. But if it's not threats of violence or intimidation, then wouldn't it be consensual? Or is this someone just maybe not saying anything and then later on going, actually, I didn't consent to that? Do they have to verbally say no in order for them not to consent? Or do they just have to think it in their head? Comments, propositions, or behavior of a sexual nature that cause a situation of humiliation, hostility, or intimidation for the victim will be punishable with a fine, community service, or up to a month-long period of house arrest, according to the bill. So I'm guessing that's the cat calling. A situation of humiliation, hostility, or intimidation. Okay, so if you say, hey, babe, uh... You got fries with that shake or, man, you got big knockers or, ooh, girl, I like the way your ass shakes when you're walking away from me. Uh, if she records that or if there's witnesses, uh, she could just go into the police department and make a complaint and that could be uh, punishable with a fine or community service. That seems like it'd be hard to implement. And, you know, what exactly qualifies as humiliation? I think that would be different for everybody, right? Hostility, intimidation. I, I guess the simple fact of um, calling out to a girl that she's hot could be intimidating. But what I'm wondering is, does this include going up to women and hitting on them? Let's say trying to get a girl's number. Maybe that humiliates a girl. Maybe that's uh, seen as hostile or she's intimidated by you because you're trying to get her number and she doesn't want you to. So it seems like uh, it's very vague. Spain's left-wing government celebrated the passing of the feminist penal code, but right-wing parties oppose the legislation which they claim reduces men's rights to the presumption of innocence and attacks traditional behavior between the sexes. Well, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Hatred of beauty and of men. Carla... Toscano, an MP for the far-right Vox party, said she was sad that the tradition of complimenting women on their looks would be banished from Spanish streets. Well, complimenting a girl on her looks is a, is a little different than catcalling. And, you know, I've never been one to catcall, and I've always thought it's strange that men call out to women. That's never going to work. You need to approach a woman and get her to like you. <laughs> you can't just call out, hey, baby, nice tits. And she's going to turn around and be like, hey, really? You think I have nice tits? Let me get your number. So I'm a little confused as to what exactly it entails. Remember that one that went, tell me what your name is and I'll ask for you for Christmas, Miss Toscano said, citing the popular cat call as an example of masculine admiration and popular ingenuity. Miss Toscano, who has in the past worn a t-shirt emblazoned with the slogan, hashtag not me too, in a statement of opposition to the anti-sexual harassment movement, was applauded by her fellow Vox MPs as she accused the government of promoting hatred of beauty and of men. You see, I don't necessarily agree with catcalling, but I don't know if that's something the government should get involved in. I mean, it's to a certain point, at a certain point it becomes harassment. Let's say a girl's walking by the same spot every day and a man continues to catcall her, then we're then we're moving into sexual harassment territory. But just to cat call once, hey, baby, nice tits. That's that's now going to be a part of the law there. That seems crazy to me. Swap violence for freedom. Irene Montero, the equality minister, defended the reform as a decisive step towards changing the sexual culture of this country. From today... Spain is a freer, safer country for all women. We are going to swap violence for freedom. We are going to swap fear for desire, she said. Spain joins a handful of other countries, including France, Belgium, and Canada, of course Canada, which have outlawed street harassment or catcalling. Campaigners against gender-based violence 
are also calling for street harassment to be criminalized in the UK. Spain's sexual rights reform comes in response to major feminist protests in 2018 after five men were acquitted of rape and convicted of lesser charges of sexual assault despite forcing an 18-year-old woman to have sex with them at the Pamplona Pamplona Bull Running Festival. Until now, Spain's law had lacked a clear definition of consent and had instead relied on evidence of violence, resistance, or intimidation to determine whether rape had occurred. So th that's good that they have a clear definition of consent. That's good. I'm for that part of the law. But the victim said she had been frozen by fear, which prevented her from resisting, experts say. This is common response during sexual assault. Okay, well, this is what I was getting at earlier. I mean, you should absolutely know if a girl is afraid for her life when you're about to have sex with her. It's just whether or not you can prove that and whether or not a girl could use that law and after the fact, she actually was into it at the time, but later on regrets it and says that she didn't consent and was frozen in fear. And the guy's like, she didn't seem frozen in fear to me. She seemed like she was consenting, but maybe she never gave verbal consent. But it just seems like a gray area where I would absolutely agree that a woman can be frozen in fear and be taken advantage of and raped. It's just... How can you tell the difference between those two things, between a woman being frozen in fear and maybe a woman just not saying anything? I know the man should be able to tell, but how can the law tell? How can you go about proving that? Basically, it seems like you'd just be taking the woman's word for it. And that's always a dangerous thing when you're just taking someone's word. But I am absolutely for if we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that a woman froze in fe fr was frozen in fear uh, while being taken advantage of, then yes, I would be for considering that rape. But it's just, um, that's hard to prove is, is all my point is. Eventually on a second appeal, the men were convicted of rape by Spain's Supreme Court, ruling that intimidation could be atmospheric and not necessarily expressed. But by then, the government was already drawing up a reform for a single consent-based offense to end the distinction between sexual assault and rape. Rape cases in Spain will now rest on the existence of consent manifested freely via acts that express the person's willingness in a clear way, so that somebody frozen in silence cannot be considered to have consented. I guess, yeah, the only problem is, is manifested freely via acts that express the person's willingness so I guess that's just the vague part. What is the expression of a person's willingness in a clear way that they want to have sex? Again, the man should know that. You should know if a woman's frozen in fear or not. But how is that going to be described in court? It's almost like she wasn't enthusiastic could be considered as non-consensual. Anyways, Miss Montero celebrated that finally only yes means yes and I believe you, sister, have become law in reference to slogans popularized by the wave of demonstrations. But for Spain's main conservative opposition, popular party, the reform jeopardizes the presumption of innocence because it inverts the burden of proof on the accused who will have to prove that there was consent. See, and this is my fear. I don't know how exactly the wording of consent would be implemented when it comes to a courtroom. And I could absolutely see it where a man is accused of rape simply because the woman wasn't enthusiastic in the way that in the way that she gave consent. She maybe was they were both drunk, let's say, and she just had sex without giving any verbal consent or without expressing in any clear way that she wanted to have sex but in her mind she wanted to have sex and went along with it but later on can claim that she didn't want to have sex and she never clearly said to the man that she wanted to and actually uh she wasn't expressing any desire to have sex even though she went along with it how do you prove that going along with it isn't an expression or a desire to want to have sex. It almost seems like it's not only the act of having sex, but you also have to do something else to express that you're down to fuck. <laughs> Sorry for the vulgar language, but yeah.
how do you prove that you were DTF? The reform, which broadly aims to help women and girls gain more freedom in their personal relationships and the ability to make decisions about their bodies, includes a series of measures aimed at reducing rape culture, including a ban on the advertising of pornography and obligatory sex education in schools for all ages. Yeah, I don't know how much that would help. Like, kids of all ages, you're literally talking about kindergartners, first graders, second graders. I mean, what are they going to do with this information? Do they really, are they really going to retain this information going forward? I think that's kind of crazy to give sex education to kids at all ages. I mean, parents don't even start talking about the birds and the bees until a certain age, but schools are going to teach it at all ages. That doesn't, I don't know, that doesn't seem right to me. Women's victims of sexual violence will also qualify for the social and economic assistance that was recently made available for victims of domestic abuse. Well, that makes complete sense. A network of 24-hour crisis centers will be open to offer victims of sexual violence, psychological, legal, and social support once the reform has been passed by the Upper House Senate and becomes law. Well, yeah, I would hope that crisis centers were already in effect, but that's great news that they'd be doing that. But anyways, that's uh, the article. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like and subscribe if you're new here. And I will see you when I see you. Bye-bye for now.